Well, welcome back. From cash to crypto, J.P. Morgan is now the first bank allowing its advisors to offer cryptocurrencies to wealth management clients. Elon Musk saying earlier this week Tesla will most likely start accepting Bitcoin as payment again as well. Joining me right now is the Chamber of Digital Commerce founder and president, Perianne Boring. Perianne, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Morning. When you hear these two things, whether it's Tesla or JPM, does this give you more confidence? confidence in terms of where things are going, the institutionalizing of crypto. Is that ha happening now? Well, I've always had all the confidence in the world that digital assets and Bitcoin specifically will emerge as its own asset class, but not without controversy. And we've absolutely seen that in the markets with Elon Musk, these about faces from the banks. It really is uh, an exciting time for this space. But as we're moving towards institutionalization, of Bitcoin, as we're moving towards mass adoption, these are all part of the stairs that we have to climb. So these two announcements, uh, you know, JP Morgan's um, specifically, um, it, it, it's what they've done is they've removed a couple of these uh, closed ended mutual funds from the restricted list. So now the uh, $630 billion under JP Morgan's wealth management division now can have access to the securitized Bitcoin and Ethereum products. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. I'm so glad that uh, Jamie Dimon's daughter was right. Because remember, his daughter was the one who first said, oh, yes, I am a big believer. And he said, no, no, no. Uh, Perian, if you will, look to the future for us. How do you believe digital assets will change the economy? Where is this going? How do you see this playing out? Yeah, and all digital assets are not equal. Bitcoin represents you know, anywhere between 60 to 80 percent of the total market capitalization of all cryptocurrencies in existence. That fluctu fluctuates over time. Um, Bitcoin has really emerged as the leader of a store of value. And in many ways, it is replacing the role gold has played in diversifying portfolios for many years. And in the last segment, we talked a little bit about inflation, corporate, institutional and retail investors are looking to invest in Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation, especially during uncertain economic times like this. What are the risks? Uh, the risk? Well, um, I think the writing is very clear clearly written on the walls. Uh, Bitcoin has been trading for 12 years um, this year. 10 out, of, wow. um, 10 out of those years, it has been um, the best performing asset in, in the marketplace. You know, we have over a decade of data wow. on Bitcoin and it really, uh, you know, over the past 10 years, it has averaged 250% returns every year. There is, I mean, the biggest criticism of Bitcoin is the short-term volatility. It's not unusual yeah. for Bitcoin's price to fluctuate between 30 and 50% a month. But on a year-to-year -year basis, you're getting 200 250% returns, and you have been for the past 10 years. So it's those short-term volatilities that make people very uncomfortable. But really, you have to look yeah. at it from a longer-term perspective. I'm glad you did that, perry -Ann, because you gave us context. You know, I didn't realize it was 12 years already. That's, that's incredible. Let me bring in James Freeman here. Go ahead, James. Oh, thanks, Maria. perry -Ann, uh, you mentioned you're talking about this as an investment and not as a medium of exchange, a currency, if you will. Uh, have, have you kind of uh, decided that it's not going to be widely used uh, in terms of purchasing products at a real t retail store? Or even I notice when individuals are transacting, at least what I observe, it's mainly Venmo, not Bitcoin. Yeah, I actually believe the IRS made that decision for us in 2014 when they declared that digital assets like Bitcoin would be taxed as property, meaning they're taxed at the transaction level and they're subjected to capital gains and investment. And tax policy very much influences human action and human behavior and, and market activity. So 
it was created to be an electronic payment system. The, the white paper issued by Satoshi Nakamoto explained it as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic payment system. So that very much was a part of the vision, but Bitcoin has really emerged as a store of value as a medium of exchange. I mentioned there's thousands of cryptocurrencies in existence today. There's been a lot of talk about stable coins over the past couple of weeks, especially in DC from a regulatory perspective. Those were really created to serve that role of payments. So it, there's different types of roles cryptocurrencies can solve. Again, Bitcoin very much has been used as a store of value in the markets. And there's other types of cryptocurrencies that were really designed for payments. Yeah. Perry, and great conversation. When you come back, we've got to get more into regulation and how the banking industry will change as a result of, of this growth story. Perry and Boring, great to see you. We'll be right back.